And in Italy, final election results were expected today, but instead, the country finds itself in a political deadlock. The inconclusive results have rattled European markets and fueled fears Italy's fragile economy could fall even further into debt. Our Europe bureau chief, Sean Mallon, is in Rome tonight. Sean? Hello, Donna. Well, Italians are used to unstable governments. They've had more than 60 since the war, but this is something different. On the one hand, they seem to be utterly fed up with all their politicians. On the other, they've given a chance to a man who would have been finished in most other democracies. Silvio Berlusconi was forced out as prime minister 18 months ago because of Italy's economic troubles. He's been convicted of tax fraud, still faces charges of paying underage prostitutes for sex, but in this campaign, he promised a rollback on popular tax increases, and he surged to a very close second. Leftist leader Pierluigi Bersani got the most seats in the lower house. Berlusconi got the most in the Senate, meaning stalemate. The other big story was the strong third place showing of a movement led by a comedian, Beppe Grillo. In the past, he suggested that Al Qaeda should just blow up the Italian parliament. Given his contempt for other politicians, he says he won't participate in any kind of coalition. Italy is in chaos. They're going to have to come to some sort of deal. But it's going to be a very painful uh, few months, certainly until there is some sort of stability, assuming that that stability arrives. Mario Monti, the economist who was brought in as prime minister to deliver stability, finished a poor fourth. His austerity measures not very popular. Monti remains a caretaker while the other parties bargain to see who can take over. New elections are possible this year, all while the Eurozone's third largest economy continues to stumble. Donna, back to you. All right, Sean Mallon in Rome tonight. Thanks, Sean.